Good day, good evening. Whenever you're watching this, hello, welcome. Uh, I'm Addison Pollack. I'm the Director of Community Engagement with AARP Indiana. I'm glad to be hosting today's episode of Legislative Director Talking About Legislative Things. And I am joined by not the Legislative Director Talking About Legislative Things, but my Co-Director of Community Engagement, Mr. Maud Lamoyo. How are you? Hey, Addison. Um, I'm really good. I'm really glad you got through that tongue twister. I was going to be, that was like a lot. I was like, that, he's going to get through that. So that was really good. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be on this, ep another episode of the Legislative Director talking about legislative things for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just glad my broadband survived, uh, you know, the intro. Um, I've been having some technical difficulties. So I'm glad, glad that you're here. I'm glad we're connected. Um, now I'd like to introduce our legislative director who's talking about legislative things, Ms. Amber Marr, how are you? Hello, Addison and Mandela. Um, I am great, thank you. The sun is shining. Um, we're getting ready to talk about some legislative issues. Uh, so it's a good day, thank you. For sure, for sure. Yeah, very grateful for the sun, very grateful for the summer sun which yes. is a great segue into summer study committee. That was nice. You like that? That was, that that was, was nice. good. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've worked on that one. So uh, today we are talking about some summer study committee topics and priorities of ours. Thank you so much, Producer Dan. Appreciate that. Um, and Amber, you are going to kind of break it down for us. Uh, you know, we're, I think we're monitoring four summer study committee uh, topics. So, um, yeah, uh, just roll with it. Let us know what, what we need to be focusing on. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we're just going to get right down to it. Um, as most of you know, or if you don't know, we'll just give a quick uh, background. The Legislative Council met in May uh, to approve uh, Resolution 21-01, which basically uh, assigns all the study committee topics to specific study committees. So although, as we have talked about in the past, we had um, worked with uh, legislators on House Resolution 31, it was actually uh, Representative Van Natter that filed that resolution for us. It was uh, um, dealing with financial security and retirement for all Hoosiers. That one did not get assigned to a study committee. Um, however, several of our other priorities have been chosen, which is exciting. Uh, so while we were a little bit let down, because uh, every year we want to talk about retirement and every year <laughs> the topic is not chosen, but that's okay. So let's start out just by uh, jumping into the interim study committee on energy, utilities, and telecommunications. Um, currently, there have been no dates uh, released on when those meetings will be held. However, the topic that was assigned to that particular interim study committee uh, is called um, and does refer to broadband um, or high speed internet. So it's the topic that was assigned to it is basically reviewing the latest annual report concerning the award of broadband grants for rural areas and the annual review of an audit of the grants. So I am going to uh, sort of throw this to Addison to describe a little bit about why this is so important to us and why we, would, we'll, we will be concerned about it and just kind of watching the conversation around uh, that yeah. topic. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Amber, for uh, kicking it over to me. Uh, you know, folks, if you've been watching this uh, this this, this uh, show for a while, if you've been keeping up with the seasons, you know that broadband and high-speed internet, interchangeable terms, uh, that's a really important topic to us. So, you know, if you're watching over the legis the 2021 legislative session, um, we I think we had like three or four broadband wins, legislative wins. Um, one of which was that the uh, the the budget, the biennium budget, includes $250 million for broadband grants. So this is all interrelated. Um, you know, Hoosiers across the, the state are trying to, you know, we're trying to close that digital divide. And ARP Indiana and ARP Nationwide cares about this issue because, um, you know, you're able to access so much, so much information, so many services uh, with high-speed internet. Um, a few of those that we really care about are telehealth. So making sure that Folks don't have to leave their home to um, get to a doctor's appointment if necessary. They can take that doctor's appointment, you know, at their leisure in their home um, and just be connected. And, you know, it's much more efficient that way. 
Uh, another thing we care about is job security. So making sure that Hoosiers have access to being able to apply for jobs or be connected with employers. And the internet is obviously a really, really uh, good, good connector uh, in, that, in that domain. Uh, and then the other thing is really just connecting folks with their families and friends. So making sure that people are able to, you know, stay in touch. We know that, you know, with the pandemic, there was a lot of isolation, social social isolation, social distancing that was happening. So ensuring that folks can stay connected, uh, you know, through whatever it may be, social media, um, online, that's really important. Um, I do want to mention that we were actually fortunate enough to give um, one of our communities, you know, tangible access to broadband um, last year uh, in 2020, Sustainable Muncie Corporation was one of our community challenge grant winners. And uh, we have a video that we shared on our Facebook page. So if, if you're digging around the Facebook page, uh, you can check out that video in our in our video section. But we were able to um, provide them with a grant that they could um, put up some, some broadband infrastructure, high-speed internet infrastructure in one of their community buildings. And it services a nearby neighborhood. Folks can come to the park and just relax and be connected on the internet. So we've been doing a lot around this issue and it's not going anywhere. It's a huge issue and we're gonna be uh, working on it in the future as well. So uh, I think I basically covered everything. Oh, one other thing I do wanna mention is we do have the emergency broadband benefit um, edition of the legislative director talking about legislative things. So uh, if you can kind of go back a few episodes, um, I think it's a pretty lengthy episode, but um, you'll, you'll find it on there. Yep, there's the web address. So uh, you can check that one out too to learn more about the EBB. But um, without further ado, Amber, I'll, I'll kick it back to you. Excellent. Addison, you covered everything. I did not even have to bring up the last episode um, <clears throat> that we did around uh, the high-speed internet for the emergency broadband benefit. So thank you and the Community Challenge uh, grant winner. I totally uh, spaced that, so that was fantastic. Thank you. And also, I just did want to mention, you know, with you talking about um, the House Bill 1001, which is the budget bill, or I guess House Enrolled Act, excuse me, uh, from this past session. Uh, getting that money into the budget was amazing. Um, as you know, we had talked about a couple of years ago, I believe it was in the 2019 uh, session where the governor had really talked about bolstering broadband and internet. Um, and so there was a hundred million dollars put in that fund um, that year. And so that I believe will be along with, you know, some other grants that the administration is giving out but I believe that's what they will be talking about in the annual report. Um, so we'll be looking at all of those things and then also keeping track of where this 250 million that was just placed in there again for grants to, for those grants to continue to be given out um, to local communities. So thank you. That was very, um, ex, you know, uh, explanatory. So we're going to move right along then uh, to the interim study committee on fiscal policy. Uh, these. Uh, specific dates have been released for that study committee. Um, they are going to be on August 10th, August 24th, and then September 14th. Um, and the topic that we are most interested in, I guess there are two technically, um, one is affordable housing, workforce housing, and missing middle housing in Indiana. And the second one deals with reviewing the latest annual report summarizing federal assistance received by state agencies. Um, I'm going to uh, throw this one, the, the first topic underneath this interim study committee to Mandela really fast, sure. uh, as he will describe some of our work and why this uh, topic is so important to us. Yeah, Mandela. so I think, <clears throat> like Addison said, I mean, I think we've we've had uh, a number of episodes with the legislative director where we've talked about different facets of housing, uh, both, you know, from the sort of affordability and workforce housing space, uh, missing middle housing, uh, which, which for many people that may be a new term, uh, but missing middle essentially, you know, talks more about um, the housing that is not there. So more look, when you look at your neighborhood, you see more single family homes. But then, you know, for ARP, it's extremely important for us to also see that we can include sort of the duplexes, triplexes, and quadplexes as well, or, you know, uh, multifamily homes, so that we, it's a good mix of housing uh, for folks. The reason the housing topic is so important to um, ARP, 
our members want to age in place in their communities. They, they want to live, uh, work, enjoy, and then retire and enjoy their retirement a lot of times in the same communities that they have uh, been in for a long time. And so housing is a key, key factor in that. And so we're going to be sort of watching uh, and sharing, I think, a broad spectrum of ARP work around housing. So we may not necessarily focus in on the affordability or uh, missing middle piece or the um, uh, workforce housing piece, but we will make sure that um, the study committee understands ARP's position on housing. Uh, one of our favorite things to talk about um, around housing is ADUs, uh, accessory dwelling units, uh, and that's a that's a term Addison knows really well. So I'll let him drop a little knowledge on y'all on what um, an ADU is, and that's that's something that we talk a lot about, and hopefully that's something that we'll be able to share with the study committee um, here come um, whenever those dates. Uh, are available for us to sort of present and, and talk about ARP's housing philosophy. Well, Madla, thanks for kicking it over to me just for a second. I'll just comment really briefly, but like ADUs, uh, accessory dwelling units, uh, these are important because uh, they allow individuals who own their homes to be able to do what they want with their property. And, and one of those things is building on um, simply what is called like an it's basically an addition to the home. So it's for someone, maybe an aging loved one to live in um, or an you know, aging friend or whomever, if you just, or if the, uh, the adult wants, the older adult wants to like rent out that ADU, the accessory dwelling unit. There's different types of accessory dwelling units. A, a lot of folks know these, um, they're, they're called mother-in-law suites, um, uh, granny flats, things like that. Um, these can be detached from your home, so they can be uh, in your backyard. Uh, smaller, they they need to be um, smaller in size to the primary residence, but um, they can be in your backyard. They can be above your garage. You can have one in your basement. Have one attached to your house. So just a little side uh, addition. So it's really cool because it allows, um, like I mentioned, caregivers to be able to have that quick, easy access. But uh, also, if you're older and you are retired and you would like to have some supplemental income, uh, depending on the community you're in, you're in, you might be able to rent out that ADU to uh, someone and earn some extra some extra uh, money as well. So a really important tool when it comes to housing. So thanks for letting me plug a little bit about uh, some further details on that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, we, we will obviously uh, do our part to make sure um, the legislators understand our viewpoint around housing and why we think it's important for communities to um, create policies that allow um, for folks to age in place, especially around housing. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, you know, we'll get a chance to do that. And I will kick it back to our legislative director to talk about the other piece of that same committee um, that she has to share with you all. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Um, I will just touch on very quickly that second topic underneath that same study committee, which is the interim study committee on fiscal policy still. Uh, they're reviewing the latest annual report summarizing federal assistance received by state agencies. Uh, we are uh, interested in that because as a quick reminder, last August, um, we sent a letter to the governor and had some conversations with his office around the federal CARES Act money that came during COVID and some of those funds that were transferred to the state of Indiana and then dispersed uh, to other departments. So we are just very interested to hear, you know, where we are with using those funds as well as um, we uh, just recently sent um, a letter to the, well, I guess two letters to the governor um, around, you know, home and community-based services, housing. It was around the, um, and I'm going to say ARPA, I, the American Rescue Plan. Um, I could have, could think of the, uh, but that stood for, so sorry, the American Rescue Plan that also uh, shifted money to states uh, to be able to utilize those funds in ways that we obviously care about, things that we are just referring to, housing, transportation, home and community-based services, um, energy, so utilities. Um, so we are hoping that there will be a robust update on not only the CARES Act funding, but hopefully some of the uh, ARPA funds that have um, been sent to the states uh, 
pocket. <laughs> um, and I know that we're just very curious to hopefully a lot of those funds are being pushed out to those areas that we are concerned about. So stay tuned on that. Um, we will be coming back. And as soon as these topics are discussed um, right now, the dates that I mentioned that the fiscal policy is meeting, only August 10th agenda has been released. And those two items were not on it. So we just have to wait till the agendas are released for the other two to be able to let you know the date for those. Um, so great. Did I miss anything, uh, gentlemen, on those two or on um, the federal assistance no, topic? No, nothing no I think. Yeah, no, you did, did a great job. Awesome. Okay, so then we'll just move right along. Um, we're going to move to the interim study committee on public health, behavioral health, and human services. And there were two um, topics underneath the study committee, review of the latest annual report of the Office of the Secretary of Family and Social Services uh, concerning any state savings resulting from the use of home and community-based services, and then reviewing the latest report of the Office of Medicaid Policy and Planning concerning progress on risk-based management care program or capitated managed care program for Medicaid recipients. That is a lot to put out there. Um, but just to kind of briefly discuss what those two points are, the first one, dealing with home and community-based services, obviously we are very interested, as Mandela has mentioned, when it came to housing, that we want people to be able to age in place, stay in their home and community as long as possible without having necessarily go just directly to a facility if it's not, um, uh, if they are able to get the services that they need within their home. So we really are interested to hear about that. I think it's always important because as we talk about HCBS, oftentimes those services are cheaper than being placed in a nursing facility. Uh, so we are um, hoping to have some uh, things to say about that and then obviously continuing to encourage the state to bolster those home and community-based services so that our state is a little bit more rebalanced. Uh, right now, we do uh, definitely put a priority on um, nursing facilities and placing individuals in facilities first without checking to see if they're able to get their services at home. But we are working towards, uh, you know, really hoping to evaluate individuals and give them the opportunity to have those services in their home first before offering them the option to just go into a facility. So there are there's a lot happening and a lot of conversations that will hopefully bring us um, a little closer in percentage wise as far as uh, home and community based services versus facilities. And that brings me to the second topic, which was talking about managed care. And, you know, I think one of the things that we have been very excited about is we've been in and involved and engaged on a lot of those meetings with the state, um, talking about moving towards a managed care um, system for Medicaid here in the state. So we are looking forward to and will be talking. Um, we've been asked, as well as many of our other colleagues and organizations that have been engaged in that discussion as well, to sort of get up. Um, tell the legislators how we feel that process is going, our stakeholders getting um, uh, the opportunity to, you know, um, uh, talk about the things that they would like to be included in the managed care. Um, so we are, we are in the very beginning stages of this. So we're looking forward to sharing our experience and some of the letters that we have sent to the Family and Social Services Administration around some of our ideas, thoughts, options, um, considerations that we want them to put into um, the managed care process or system. So Stay tuned. Those are some pretty heavy topics, um, but we are looking forward to uh, reporting back and giving you more of an update around those um, topics. So, oh, and I'm so sorry. I wait. Did, go ahead. Somebody was going to say something. Hey, no, I was just going to. I was just going to plug in here too. Um, I think one of the other things that ARP would like to also figure out is how can we um, not necessarily merge, but how we can talk more inclusively about how you know, sort of the long-term care space and the housing space and where those two meet and intersect. Uh, so I, I'm, I, stay tuned. Uh, we, we, will, we, will, we will try to do that. That's, that's uh, innovative thinking that the ARP Indiana team and, and our, our national colleagues are sort of thinking through 
Uh, and so hopefully, you know, if you have some ideas, drop them in the, I always wanted to do this, drop them in the comment section um, for sure. Uh, we want to hear from you all and, and get some input around that too. So I just thought I'd plug that here now since we were talking about both topics. That was perfect. I completely forgot to mention that. Thank you, Mandela. Um, yes, because that is very important. And I think that uh, we really want to have those conversations because a lot of that stuff is very connected. So. Um, and then just one last thing on that study committee, um, the dates that have been released for public health, behavioral health and human services. Uh, actually, there is one happening on August 4th, um, August 11th, and then there was one scheduled on the 18th. So if you already had that on your calendar, please know that that one has been canceled and it has been changed to August 25th. So um, we will keep you posted. The August 11th one, we do know that that is where we'll be talking about the managed care uh, conversation. Um, and then we will keep you posted about other agenda items as they are listed. So moving right along. Um, the last but not least, there's other study committees that sometimes we jump in on um, if it sounds like there might be something that would come up that we would be interested in. But since these are just the top four uh, interim study committees, uh, we will end with the Probate Code Study Commission. Um, this one, the commission was charged with studying the following topics. Uh, needed changes in the following. The Probate Code, the Trust Code, any other statute affects, affecting the administration of a um, estate, a guardianship, probate jurisdiction, trust, or fiduciary. Again, there's a lot of words there. Um, <laughs> I will help you real fast to let you know that the reason why we have flagged this um, commission is because it does mention guardianship. And one of the things that we have and continue to be involved in is just conversations around guardianship and how we can um, maybe find less restrictive options for individuals when we um, really got engaged in the supported decision-making uh, topic. And um, also this last session, we dealt with a bill that was trying to put guardians um, a little bit higher up to really help people um, when they pass away to be able to have their wishes be um, pushed through as quickly as possible. We knew during COVID, uh, the guardian was listed 10th on the list. And oftentimes the reason why someone is under guardianship is because there are not family members to help them. So they had to go back and call everyone before that guardian since the, the relationship of guardianship really ended at death. Um, that guardian could not help that individual um, live out their final wishes as quickly as they should have been able to. So while we got them moved up a little bit, we didn't get them moved up quite as far as we would have liked, uh, but it was a step in the right direction. And sometimes we have to take baby steps. So we will see what this uh, holds and if there's anything that they're going to be talking about around guardianship that we would need to get engaged in or discuss. All right. Well, I think that covers everything for the interim study committees that I wanted to discuss, but we do have one more thing left. Um, we are going to do a group shout out and I am going to toss it over to Mandala to go ahead and start us off. Yeah, for sure. So um, a really, really big shout out to our friends at the Indy Chamber. Uh, they are, and I'm, I'm, I'm reading this so I get it right. They are the Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives Chamber of the Year for 2021. So big shout out to the crew up there, uh, Michael, Mark, Tim, you know, the whole Lisa. It's a whole, if I start naming names, I'm going to get, I'm going to miss somebody, but Big shout out to that team. Uh, they are great advocates for a lot of the stuff that we were talking about or have talked about in the past. Um, transportation, housing, broadband, um, all of those things. So big congratulations to them. Um, you are the number one chamber in our heart all the time. Uh, but now the rest of the world gets to know it uh, with your award. So congratulations and big shout outs to them. Excellent. Um, and I, yes, we are just so grateful to have them as a partner in all of the topics and issues that we work on. Um, I know that I'm just very excited for them. Uh, and I know, Addison, I wanted to make sure I toss it to you. I'm sure you've got something to say, too. We're just all really happy for them. So go ahead, Addison, if you had anything to say about it. 
Yeah, no, I just want to say it's well deserved and congrats to the entire team. We look forward to working with them in the future. I know that um, the Hobnob is coming up, which we will be supporting. So uh, really appreciate everything that the chamber does and we're glad to, to uh, support them and give them the shout out. So congrats, guys. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Madla. This has been an excellent episode, despite all the hiccups. Sorry, folks. But um, hey, we're just rolling with it. You know, we're all working from home these days. So you understand. We understand. Um, no, it's really it's really great to be able to talk to you about all these important topics and just stay tuned because we will be providing updates on what's happening at the State House with the, the Summer Study Committee uh, and all the topics that we're monitoring. So uh, stay tuned and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks. Thank you.